had driven the Alliance back to their capital, King's Ending. The time for the final battle had arrived. Prepare to destroy the Alliance, and with it, all good in the land once and for all. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom full of flowers and rainbows, where the sun shone all the time and there was loads of that goody-goody, lovey-dovey, good people stuff going on. There, the alliance of abominably good people lived in unearned wealth and prosperity. After countless battles, the forces of the absolute evil reached the Alliance capital, King's Ending. The laughable remnants of the forces of good had come here to make ready for the final battle. The evil would pay a high price indeed to storm those fortress walls, or so they thought. <laughs> Suddenly, a rumble rose from deep within the earth. With earth-shaking steps, the unstoppable evil began its trek towards the front. In the terribly improbable event that it may have forgotten how that works, a formidable help function has been provided. I said, with earth-shaking steps, the unstoppable, if somewhat sluggish, evil began its trek towards the front. The presence of the absolute evil was also reflected in the land itself. Grass withered, and in places, the ground tore open to reveal bubbling lava. <laughs> the inexplicably obtuse evil began its trek towards the front. It says so right here in the Dungeons 2 strategy guide. A few of the Alliance units had entrenched themselves here. A determined, absolute evil marched towards them in order to strike them down with its mighty weapon. The absolute evil had discovered a medal. These legendary awards ensure the creature could be made even more Eyes ablaze with greed, the insidious evil gazed upon the blood-drenched battlefield. Here, the last defenders of good would die, and an age of evil begin. Projectiles from the Alliance's catapults darkened the sky. But the Horde's fighting skills were at their best in darkness, if they survived. Absolute Evil strode like a war god through the defenders' ranks and smote them with ease to the ground.
took yet another hero to the slaughter. was as easy as taking candy from a baby. The absolute evil destroyed the defender's camp in the east with the greatest of ease. Now, only one tiny camp offers any resistance to the absurdly evil evil. And even that won't be able to hold out for much longer. Yet another hero to the slaughter. The absolute evil destroyed the defenders' camp in the west with the greatest of ease. The defenders in front of the city had been beaten to a pulp and defeated. Now the time had come to attack King's Ending, the final battle. The city gate was firmly barricaded by the Alliance's archers, but the absolute evil would not allow itself to be held up by such a ridiculous impediment. So, go get them! Destroy them now! Ha 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 ha! Oh yes, sorry. Stay in character. <clears throat> the absolute evil used its all-powerful magic to eliminate the archers and open the gate to the city. The absolute evil had a good long think, but at precisely that exact moment, it decided to act and to deploy its overwhelming magic powers. But this proved to be a complete fallacy. It would appear that the distracted evil was not aware that it should use one of its powers here, something that could have been done with ease via the GUI. If in doubt, the formidable help utility could also have been consulted on the matter. Secretly, the confused evil was debating whether it wouldn't be much nicer to watch a series of My Little Unicorn. All this stuff about evil campaigns was just so totally overrated. Using its legend of, wait for it, Derry Powers.
The absolute evil destroyed the impediment with ease and simultaneously eliminated a whole group of defenders. True story. The road to the capital was now clear. The absolute evil did not hesitate for even one nanosecond. The insidious evil entered King's Enemy. A small, pitiful group of defenders stood at the door. Suddenly, the doors of several houses in the city opened, and with a loud roar, defenders bore down on the rather surprised an ambush. The invincible evil had crushed the defenders. King's ending had been defeated. At least, that's what it thought. Suddenly, the final heroes of the Alliance emerged from nowhere. Another ambush? Now, this was becoming very boring. But wait, this time it was different. Instead, the heroes raised their hands and started singing an incomprehensible chant. A magical ritual? This did not bode well. Well, actually, it built the arrival of good things, great things, unless you happen to be the absolute evil. Somewhere in the depths of the dungeon, the ultimate evil awoke. It did not know what had happened, nor why it had awoken, but it longed for revenge. The last remaining heroes of the country joined forces and cast a powerful banishment spell. The absolute evil disappeared from sight with a threatening gesture, and a faint whispered, could be heard coming from its lips. The absolute evil had been banished, and its essence shattered into several pieces. Its reign of terror. and the hand of terror arose, controlled by the ultimate evil. Come on, hand of terror, arise, damn you! Methinks that exploring the surrounding area would be a sensible strategy. However, to do this, light would be required. Hmm, still not bright enough. An old throne room was revealed by the light. The circumstances remained a mystery. The Hand of Terror flew through the throne room, following each and every thought the ultimate evil had. After a few flying sessions, the ultimate evil was able to control the Hand with ease. The time had come to call forth creatures who were completely devoted to it and would do its dirty work. Little snots were the dregs of each and every dungeon and spent their time taking care of it. The expansion mad evil hired one snot on the spot.
after very careful consideration, the ultimate evil now decided to recruit a little snot. The mentally somewhat challenged evil apparently was having a few problems focusing on the current task at hand. But then suddenly, the moment came when it hired a little snot. Dear Ultimate Evil, I think we got off to a bit of a bad start. What is meant to be happening is that I tell an exciting, atmospheric and compelling story and from time to time make predictions of what you're about to do. When that happens, it would be really great if you could kindly work with me and do what I say. Is that clear? So get on with it. Hire one of those damn little snots or I swear I will crawl out of this stupid screen and rip off your head and then I'll down your neck and if you've still not had enough, I'll in your ear. All right. The first little snot appeared. It was completely ready to work in the dungeon and to crawl in the dust before the ultimate evil. Little snots were important to the ultimate evil because they took care of many important little things, such as excavating new areas. The psionically gifted evil could sense the presence of something important that was buried to the south. It instructed its little snots to dig in that direction. Oh. As quick as a thought, the little snot made his way to the marked position and began to dig.
Behold, the creatures of the overjoyed evil had apparently been much more industrious than it had thought. A great dungeon was revealed behind the wall. Everything was already in place. Doors, traps, a well-filled treasury. Oh, wait. Treasury? And where, if you please, is this treasury? Oh, oh well. One can't expect too much of these mindless little snots. First of all, some gold had to be dug out to make space for a treasury to be created. The Hand of Terror swiftly marked a few small gold veins so that the little snots could excavate them.
The dungeon of the expansion mad evil grew and prospered, but unfortunately it had reached the maximum possible population it could currently manage. Now a creature would have to be thrown into the bottomless pit before any others could be brought in. Creature disappeared into the pit of uselessness with a long drawn and gradually diminishing. Oh. This particular act of wickedness brought a smile to the face of the ultimate evil. Oh. As soon as the gold vein was selected, a little snot immediately set out to mine valuable gold for the greedy evil. Once most of the gold had been mined, the Hand of Terror quickly created a treasury on the spot so that the precious metal could be safely stored. Clever Evil mastered this task with flying colors. From now on, Little Snots could use the treasury to store mined gold. It was then at the Greedy Evil's disposal whenever more rooms needed to be built or new creatures recruited. Little Snots were all well and good, but were too weak and cowardly to defend the dungeon. Since it was not able to defend itself, the ultimate evil would have to hire some orcs. But they would require food. Liquid food. Well, beer to be precise. So the next important thing to build was a brewery, and that would require some space to be creative. The ultimate evil had the feeling that its servants were not really putting their backs into the work. Might a hearty slap from the hand of terror change that? The eyes of the mentally challenged evil swept over one of the dungeon doors. It was child's play for the Hand of Terror to open and close these for its servants. They were, of course, firmly locked at all times to the enemy.
the district eveling, there was now an area cleared for the brewery site, and with quick finger snaps from the hand of terror, the room stood ready. With a finger snap of the hand of terror, the brewery was built. Excellent. But the recently built brewery lacked a brewing copper. With a sigh of resignation, the overworked evil set about taking care of that too. Hard-working evil effortlessly built a brewing copper so that delicious beer could be brewed as soon as possible. One of the little snots started working on the brewing copper. The nostalgic evil banished all thoughts of Oktoberfest and brass bands. Those would have to wait. More important tasks had to be completed first. Both beer and gold were now available in the dungeon. So it was time to hire some creatures to defend against greedy heroes or whatever else snuck around underground. At present, it was only simple orcs declaring undying loyalty to the ultimate evil. The rest of the horde was scattered to the winds. Orcs were defensive close combat specialists, capable of dealing with many opponents. However, they were very vulnerable to ranged attacks. Payday! An eerie gong rang through the halls. It did not bode well for the ultimate evil's treasury stocks, for at each sounding of the gong, the creatures would collect their undeserved wages. However, there was little it could do about this, as it was chained to the throne. Thus, it had to give free rein to its servants' desires, for the time being at least.
Suddenly, one of the repellent eagle's servants became very thirsty. This was typical of a troop member of the unanonymous alcoholics known as the Horde. The Dipso made his way to the nearest brewery to quench his thirst. A thirsty orc arrived at the brewery. Eager and slavering, he started demolishing the alcohol hoarding evil's stock of beer. One of the creatures had come up with a plan to create a trade union and go on strike for better working conditions. Once he remembered exactly what the ultimate evil would do to him, the idea was quickly shown. The little snots found a healing potion in a hidden room. This was able to restore one of the ultimate evil's creatures to full health. The little snots found a healing potion in a hidden room. This was able to restore one of the ultimate evil's creatures to full health. The snail-like evil was slow. So very slow. It took almost eons to create even one tiny bit of an orc army. Fortunately, at this very moment, some orcs fell from the heavens to strengthen the army. This was a miracle and had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that a certain narrator had got hideously bored and was doing all he could to speed up the process. One louse-infested orc crawled up from the depths and declared allegiance to the ultimate evil. 
the first step towards the creation of a powerful army had been taken. The profound evil had had enough of dungeon sightseeing and now wanted to move to the surface to try a dish that is best served cold. Revenge. Some Alliance members were bound to be guarding the entrance to the overworld. A fine appetizer for a vengeful evil. horrified expression crossed the ultimate evil's face when it discovered that all the chickens from its chicken farm had been eaten. What were its creatures going to eat now? Wait a moment. Chicken? Oh, whoops, that's another game. Got them confused.
It's payday. Nameless evil's creatures came upon a spider's nest during their search for an entrance to the overworld. It would take more than one orc to smoke that out. The abysmal evil used the hand of terror to grab several of the creatures that were still completely inexperienced at fighting and threw them onto the spider's nest. all a bit slow for you. Visit the premium shop where you can buy 20 gems for just $100, which will speed up the rate of which this work is done. Hang on a minute. This isn't a free to play game. Just completely ignore what I just said.
It's payday. Defend the throne room. Apologies, but a narrator has got to earn a living too. So, we interrupt this game for a short commercial message. Buy games from Calypso. <laughs> <laughs> 